Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to see if we can repair a uh, piece of my shop equipment. Most of you have heard me talk about the uh, other side of the Tin Barn being what I call the, the dirty side. And that's where I've got uh, belt sanders, belt grinders, uh, buffers, uh, grinder, uh, stone grinders, Scotch Bright wheels, welding table, all those kind of things. And I stepped in there one day last week, it was actually while I was working on the previous project, the, uh, the corn sheller, uh, corn cutter, and I needed to, uh, to grind a, a piece of metal. I, I don't even remember now which, what it was. It might not even been that project. But in any case, I went over there to use the bench grinder, a little six inch skill bench grinder, grinder, and it wouldn't come on. I flipped the switch a couple times. Uh, it just simply refused to do anything. And I had used it not long ago, so I, I didn't think anything was wrong with the motor. Uh, I did the, the normal uh, plug receptacle switch back and forth, narrowed it down that it was in fact uh, the, the grinder, the bench grinder itself. This is a Skill 3380. It's a definitely a homeowner hop shop, a hobby shop grinder. It's not any of the big boys. Uh, but the switch just doesn't feel right. And I'll tell you, go ahead and be honest with you right up front. I, uh, I took this bezel off right here and looked at the switch. Uh, it's a sealed switch. Uh, and actually jumpered across it and determined it is the switch that's bad. Let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll show you how I determined that it was in fact the switch. All right, the, the unit is definitely unplugged right now. So let's take this bezel loose. Now there's not much slack at all in there. I can pull just a little bit. Back on the back side of this switch, there are two connectors. This is a single pole, single throw. And there's just a little bit of the contact showing right there. So to determine if it was a switch, that was bad. If I jump her across that switch, it should come on, no matter where the, what position the uh, switch is in. But it should come on. If it doesn't come on, then it's something in the motor or the, there's a uh, starter capacitor, capacitor back under here. So I got this little piece of... Uh, jumper wire here and I'm going to plug the, the uh, grinder in and of course as you can see it does nothing with the switch so I'm going to see if I can jump her across those two contacts uh, on the switch just momentarily enough to see if this comes on And it does, so that tells me that it's definitely the switch that's bad. Unplugged. Now I looked online for uh, replacement parts for this grinder. And I actually found the switch. And the first, no first thing I noticed about that is... Uh, switch. This is one of those uh, generic parts supply house. Uh, but it said the switch was obsolete, but they had two of them in stock. And of course the only way to find out what the freight was going to be and the tax and all that uh, was to put it in the cart and actually go to checkout, which I did. The switch was less than three dollars. But by the time I added shipping, tax and shipping, it was almost $10. I wasn't quite ready to do that. Uh, there's a part number on the switch, H HY35C. 
So I looked that up and found several suppliers and to my delight is actually listed on Amazon. But I couldn't hardly believe that on Amazon. It was a two pack. But with with tax, uh I'm prime member so there's no shipping, but with tax, you about twenty four dollars for that, twelve dollars a piece for the switch. I said, just not gonna do that. This whole grinder on Amazon is not but sixty dollars. So I was not about to spend twenty dollars for a two pack of these switches, one third the price of the whole grinder. So I looked around my stash of switches and I've got gobs of these. I've got dozens of these double pole double throw switches which would work exactly fine. Double throw means two direction. Double pole is two sets of pole, two sets of contacts. I bought a, a bunch of these at an auction one time. It was a, a electric shop uh, and the auctioneer was selling the raw material in there, a shelf at the time. Uh, and I bought a shelf and there was seven or eight boxes of these with 24 to the box. So I've got a lifetime supply of these and like I say, they this would work in there but I would only be using two of these six contacts. So I ran to Lowe's this morning and picked up a single pole, single throw switch. It does have the screw type terminals and these are the spade terminals on here. Um, I'm hoping the spades will fit over these terminals once I take the screw out. But let's look at something else right quick. Let's see if I can get this switch off and again we're unplugged. This bezel, to mount this switch in this bezel is kind of like the square peg in a round hole. Uh, it's, it might could get it in there. It should be fairly simple to pop out. So you can see the hole in that. This wouldn't quite fit into it. So what I think we're going to do real quick is take a piece of, uh, I've got some aluminum stock and we're going to trace this out and make a new bezel to mount this switch in. All right, I took the switch out of the pack and removed the screws off of these terminals and as you can see each one of the terminals has a boss if you will on them uh, that's got the threads in it. I believe the thickness here, I believe the spade connectors would slide over that if I can get that little thread boss down. So I'm going to take the, the Dremel, I'll do that off camera, I'm going to take the Dremel with a grinding wheel on and see if I can remove that little bit of boss that's on these, uh, on each one of the terminals. Alright, I was able to take the uh, Dremel, remove that boss uh, from each of the two terminals and they were also a little bit too wide so I just uh, ground a little bit off them uh, off of each side on both terminals got it hooked back up now let's put this piece of cardboard under there just to keep anything from shorting out and I've got the switch in the off position plug it in So that's definitely going to work. So what we started to do a few minutes ago, we'll go ahead with now, and that's to make a new bezel. Found this piece of, uh, it's about 16 gauge aluminum uh, sheet uh, in my uh, supply bin. Uh, I say it's about 16 gauge, it measures 68 thousandths, but it's powder coated on both sides. I've got our existing bezel uh, clamp to it now and we'll just take a scribe I 
All right, let's see if, yeah, I think that's good enough of a mark. We can follow it on the bandsaw. So let's step over to the bandsaw right quick and cut this out. <clears throat> we'll do our bolt holes, our bolt hole pattern after we, uh, uh, after we get this cut out and dressed up. Okay, I saw that uh, pretty much proud of the line all the way around. So now let's go in there to the uh, belt grinder and see if we can dress this right down to the line. We're actually over here now in the uh, dirty side of the tin barn. This is the tube of 72 belt grinder I did in the series a couple of years ago. We're going to use it with this 80 grit uh, belt, I guess it is and grind this down to uh, to the line. All right, one more thing we want to do while we're over here in the dirty side. We got a little bit of a roll right here. And this is nothing other than an old, I think possibly old washing machine motor uh, with a scotch Bright wheel mounted on it. You also, you saw in another recent video making arbor to mount a scotch Bright wheel on the motor. So we'll just use that to round that off a little bit. I'm not going to try to remove all that powder coat that's on that. We're going to uh, give this a coat of paint, black, uh, flat black paint, before we uh, uh, put it to use. But let's go back over now and lay out our bolt hole pattern and also the center hole for the switch. Let's find the center line. 1.877 divided by 2.939. All right, that give us two lines there, but what we'll do is split that difference. 3.721 All right, now we got a good center line or center mark there. As far as the bolt hole pattern is concerned, I guess we could lay these out here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a pencil and put a sanity mark We'll set this up on the mill and but beforehand we'll get this distance here. And I know all of you know this trick, but with the calipers zeroed out, <clears throat> we'll get this distance size of this hole right here and zero out the calipers again. Now we can simply go from outside to outside. 
3.146 and if we divide that by 0 I mean by 2 3.146 divided by 2 1.573 from the center so we'll set this up on the mill vise drill this for the size hole for the switch to go through and then move on the same axis 1.573 to each side of zero. Got our workpiece in the mill vise now. Got a, a center drill mounted in the truck and got it lined up on center. Now we want to go 1.573 to each side. So I'll zero out X and Y right there. That's kind of springy right there, so I'm taking it real easy. All I want is a starter so that the, uh, the final drill doesn't run. All right, let's go to the other side of zero. Now, while we're right here, the screw that holds these on, 730 seconds is the best fit to give just a little bit of slack. The 1364 it would go there, but give just a little bit in case my center won't exactly right. We'll go with a 730 seconds. Now mistakenly a lot of people will drill a hole for this for a half inch and I have done that uh, too many times uh, and that's just too slack. Actually a, let me find it coming down here, a 15 30 seconds is the best fit for that. And there doesn't have to be any wiggle room in that. So I got a 15, 30 seconds bit. All right, I'm going to slow this down just a little bit. All right, I'm going to deburr this back side back here really good and then clean this off and give it a coat of spray paint and meet you back over at the uh, at the workbench to to actually install this okay while well, the paint was drying on our new bezel I took the time to go ahead and clean this off. Uh, it was obviously in the dirty side of the uh, tin born, but I got it cleaned off all the way around. We're going to mount the switch in now. And the on off indicator uh, is, is keyed, so there's only one way for it to go on. That looks pretty straight on the bezel. Now the two wires on here, it doesn't matter which one goes where, but I'll put this one on the right on the uh, on the, the uh, center terminal just like it was on the other switch. Alright, the switch is in the off position now. Let's plug it in.
Okay, I think that's going to kind of conclude this project. Uh, if this had been just a matter of changing the switch, I probably wouldn't have even made a video out of this. But I thought some of you might uh, appreciate and maybe even enjoy seeing replacing the bezel as well. Uh, yeah, I spent about $5 for this switch from, uh, from Lowe's and then spent about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes uh, making the bezel. So would I have been better off to buy the $10 switch online? Maybe, but that's exactly what I've got this shop for, is to do little projects for myself. In this case, it didn't save about 4 or $5, but I enjoyed it, and I hope you guys got something out of it as well. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.